In my last video, I started the process of dismantling this old um, piece of decking, or these pieces of decking from an old uh, Grand Banks trawler, and prepping the wood to reuse them, repurpose them on, a, uh, on my center console. Typically, you don't think of the term repurposing and center console um, going together or having anything to do with each other, but it's just an obsession of mine. Um, I can remember when I was very young, very young, being in my daddy's truck when he would stop on the side of the road and pick up things. He was the original repurposer. Um, it would embarrass me. I'd have to slink down in the seat, and now I'm just like him. But anyway, I didn't find these on the side of the road. These came from my old boat I cut up. So we'll start this video with a whole bunch of uh, miscellaneous decking scraps, some in good shape, some not so much. So again, repeating some things from last week's video. I glued up some uh, blocks to make the corners. I didn't have anything big enough to uh, cut these rounded corners out of that was thick enough. So just glued these up, put them underneath the um, actual swim step and trace the line. And then I cut the curves on the bandsaw. And then I refined the curves with the belt sander until they fit pretty well. And then I lopped the outside corner off of these little blocks so my clamp would uh, have a 90 degree surface to pull against and not try to fall off. There'll be some short grain here so I didn't want to risk um, the piece cracking when I clamped it tight so I just left the bulk of the uh, material on and I trimmed it after it was glued and stabilized glued to the swim step. So I got the outside corners fitting pretty well and I put a coat of uh, epoxy on the inside and I got the two um, tr outside trim pieces I had to glue them up because the stuff I had wasn't wide enough and there's the other curve and it's very cold so I glued them this morning and it's still sticky so my edge pieces they're glued up and I uh, ran them through the thickness planer and then I edge jointed one side and table saw the other so they're good stock and I've got them fitting, but I don't have a clamping arrangement where I can glue the three sides at once, unfortunately. So I'm going to glue the long side and the curve on this one, and the long side and the curve on this one. And I really doubt if it'll be dry this afternoon, so I can rearrange the clamps and get the short side, because it's just it's cold here. Y'all may laugh at me, all you northerners, but uh, it's freaking in the 40s. It's cold. So yesterday I glued and fit the, or fitted and glued the long side and the curve, and now I have the short side um, fit and clamped, and the two hidden sides uh, fit and clamped on both swim steps. So ready to glue. I got the glue heating up in my wife's studio, and I will. Um, I think I can one by one remove these clamps and apply the glue and clamp them back and then that'll be it for the day waiting for the glue to set and because i had to round the corners on the um, middle part of this so much to get the glass to roll over nicely it left a big ugly gap around the perimeter behind the teak wood so i just filled it with uh, epoxy and now i got a bunch of cleaning to do on this thing when this epoxy sets so all the epoxy's cured, it's been a couple of days, and I did some rough sanding and some rough planing, trying to even up these edges, and I have uh, sketched the curve, I use blue tape so I can see the line better, on both of them. So I'm going to cut the curve, and I'm going to cut the excesses off. I was hoping to cut these curves on the bandsaw, but they're just, they were just too heavy, I couldn't hold them, so I ended up cutting them with the jigsaw, which never leaves a good cut, so I had to cut way outside the line to make sure the blade wouldn't wander on the backside into the line and that left me with a little bit of belt sanding to do but with a coarse grit on the belt sander you can remove wood very very fast. So to prepare these boards I need to I think first cut them all to rough length and second joint them because some of them have a serious arc in them and third I need to plane them to final thickness they're a little bit too thick yet they need to match the trim I put around the perimeter of the steps. And then plow the joint for the sealant like they had before. Some of it's still left. And then cut them to length and glue them in. And I guess the, the old screw holes, the bungs, they're just going to be random. I, 
I don't think I can uh, make them uniform. So we'll just put them wherever they lay. You might even use them for screws. This is a sled I've made for my saw years ago. And you can tell by all the holes in it how many different setups I've used over the years. But um, <clears throat> I tried to straighten one edge of these out in the joiner and it doesn't work good. The joiner does not like that rubber stuff and it doesn't want to slide evenly. So I'm, I set up the sled to cut them. So the sled's just a simple deal. It just has a track, follows the track in the table saw. And the edge of this plywood was cut with the blade. So this is exactly what the blade is. So all you gotta do is um, put that edge there and this edge there. So it's going out. So if I have this edge good and that edge good, it ought to cut. And now I have a straight edge that I can uh, I can cut this side with the table saw, with a regular rip fence. So. This is good stuff. I could have cut it a little bit more. So after I had a straight edge on one side, then I ripped the other side parallel with the table saw and I measured every single one. Um, they all varied. Some I got two and a quarter out of, and two, some of them are up to two and five eighths. And I'm uh, thinking it's going to be close here, so I was trying to save every little sixteenth of an inch I could save. Straightening them all out, I lost a lot of wood. Um, so instead of cutting a rabbit and having the boards tight with each other, I'm gonna uh, just space the boards when I put them down. Then I'll have, I'll have plenty. Those over there are too short. So right now I need to thickness plane them to match the trim that's already on the swim step. So this end is easy. The angle of the cut is consistent all the way across. This end not so much. Um, the angle changes a little bit because it's kind of tapered and each one is going to be a little bit of a different length. So I'm going to have to mark Mark these in place and number them so I don't get them mixed up when I take them off the glue. Okay, I got the majority of them are ready to glue. Um, not sure exactly. It's kind of tricky. For one thing, if you just touch them, they move out of alignment. So it's really particular. If I put C clamps on the edges, then I can't put gravity clamps in the middle because it's going to be picked up. Um, I think I might just go ahead and put screws in the holes that are already there to kind of just keep it from moving around so much then take them off maybe four at a time spread the glue um, the good thing is that the epoxy I have is really slow so I got plenty of time I think I'll glue the whole thing and then put a couple of three layers of cardboard and then gravity put some weight on them um, if I don't put the cardboard, if one is maybe a 30 second higher than the next one, then it's going to take all the load. If I put the cardboard, it'll kind of spread that load out a little bit. So um, I got some nice brown screws, and I, I did a sample on one, and it did fine. So I'm going to go ahead and one by one get these as close as I can to being straight. And put a screw in them, and then when I take them all off, the screws should find those holes again, and it should be quicker put them back on after I got glue smeared all over the place. I had to drill the holes because the bronze screws um, not tough enough to drill through the fiberglass. The, the white you see is a two or three layers of fiberglass cloth. So drilled each one, put the screws in and this really worked uh, really worked pretty good this system. So I'm ready to glue. I've got the two swim steps sitting on this big timber and what that will allow me to do is to put gravity clamps in the middle and try to squish the middle tight and also get C clamps 
down both edges. Um, so I've got the board screwed, just enough screws to kind of make them go back in the same place when I take them all out. And I'm going to smear some epoxy um, with a notch trowel and then move quickly, but I don't have to go crazy because the glue is kind of the slow setting. Put all the screws back on, put the cardboard on, put the weight distributing boards on, put some gravity in the middle, put some C-clamps on the edges, and then I will want to see if I'm going to do the second one. We'll do one first. If nothing moved during the clamping process, I think we're going to be golden. If one of those boards moved, I got to it'd be very difficult to fix it, but I can fix it. So we'll see you tomorrow morning. Beautiful. Well, I'd like to use this caulk on all the seams. It's a Home Depot. It's a polyurethane caulk. It's pretty good stuff. I've used it a lot. I want to use black. But I have this brown. So I made a little sample board here. I glued a few pieces of teak down. And I caulked them. And I'm going to let it cure. And I need to see how it does with the belt sander. Because a lot of caulks don't sand well. Um, if this was a real deck and I was relying on it to be waterproof and structural, I would use the polysulfide black caulk. But I don't have it. It's not available locally. I'd have to order it. I'd rather just get something from Home Depot. So I'm going to give this a shot see how it holds up. So have to let it cure overnight. Or maybe, maybe even longer. It's going to be wet and damp today. But this is my sample. Needed 50-something plugs. I always try to cut the plugs out of the same wood that the plug's going in. So, board for board, they're probably not exactly the same, but it's from the whole batch. I save all my drops um, and try to uh, minimize loss, and I cut as many plugs as I can out of every little scrap. So, popping these out with a screwdriver instead of the table saw like most people do um, leaves a grain that I can see better because I have in the past confused table saw cuts with the grain and glued the plug in, and when you sand it, it's backwards. Okay, got my last few pieces cut on both sides. I got all my plugs ready. I'm going to mix up some glue. And these are easy. I can reach these with C-clamps, clamp them, and then uh, 
put a little um, plug in every hole. These full depth caulk joints that I'm using, are they're not really kosher. Um, typically you want your caulk joint to be square in cross section or maybe a little wider than tall because you don't want the caulk to be so rigid that it can't um, stretch. The way I have it here with this caulk that's uh, what five eighths tall and a quarter inch wide, there's no way it's going to be able to stretch sideways. Um, it will probably pull loose from the board or pull some of the board off with it. But in this case, these this is not really a structural deck. These are just decorative boards, and they're glued with epoxy onto a surface that's not going to move. So I don't expect any movement in the deck boards. So um, I'm cutting this corner and I'm comfortable with that. The last few strips are glued um, two days ago. No, yesterday. So they're dry. I'm going to bring the boards into my wife's studio, try to warm them up a little bit, and caulk the joints. I tried to push the caulk, um, push it all the way down into the bottom. You can kind of see it flowing up in front of the caulk gun. Try to get it all the way down in there. And I used to think electric caulk guns were kind of a joke, but after doing this, I can see where there's a market for them. My, my grip was pretty toasted by the time I finished both of these um, swim steps. The, the cold weather made the caulk stiff and uh, you had to really squeeze to get it going. So you saw where I made the little um, sample board with the caulk, the brown caulk, which is the same caulk, it's just different color and I sanded it after a couple of days and it did okay and I should have realized that it really wasn't okay but being the eternal optimist like I am I just went ahead with it and um, bought four tubes of the they didn't have black but it's bronze it's pretty close and I caulked it and the weather did turn a little cooler but I uh, caulked it all it was in my wife's studio which is not really climate controlled but she has a little space heater so it's not as cold as my shop which is wide open and I left it for a, a week I think a full week and I put the belt sander on it and it did fair um, so what seems to happen is this it skins over real fast so the caulk under the dried skin doesn't want to cure or didn't want to cure I know it will cure eventually I mean even if you uh, don't open the tubes eventually the stuff gets hard so anyway, the, the one that was stacked on top, I belt sanded with the um, 36 grit and kind of, you know, use that like a plane to kind of flatten it out. And then I belt sanded with, I think, 60 grit and got it better. By this time, you can see some of the um, caulk had failed. And then random orbital sand, which uh, on the straight parts is really unnecessary, but it helps a lot on the trim because the belt sander is sanding cross grain it leaves a lot of scratches so just clean it up make it look better and then we get the router and round over the edges round edges are always more durable than square edges and then get the random orbital sander and clean that up and uh, then it, it looks really good uh, the caulk was frustrating to deal with I clogged up a lot of sanding belts um, it's not the end of the world it will cure but it didn't cure very fast and then the second step the one that was stacked underneath this by about an inch spacer it didn't cure hardly at all so I had to give it another three or four days and then ended up using the um, slick to cut out more of the rubber okay, before I started belt place, sanding and that and did a little better so yeah, it'll come off you know again, you live and learn time, but it's in there for now and I had some troubles um, when I fit the T-bolts the bottom I didn't have the glass topped and I didn't have the wood so now it's thicker and being thicker it pushed it back and having it glass pushed it out so I had a little problem I sanded down the wood as much as I could I don't want to sand through the glass because I want the glass and then I ended up just drilling the holes in the uh, angle irons a little bigger so I got it they're all fitting so it's good now it needs to be scrubbed all the sawdust is sticking to the caulk, which is still kind of sticky, but I don't want to scrub it because I got some failures here where the belt sander ripped the uh, caulk out. So I want to caulk these before I put any water on it, but it uh, came out pretty good, pretty happy. Don't even have the brace on it yet, and it's pretty strong. I wouldn't want to jump on it.
it's pretty strong so the other one the caulk is still sticky so it's in the sun trying to dry I'm pretty disappointed in that caulk it's been it's been a whole week and it's still gummy and it's still stuck to the belt when I was belt sanding it so next time I'm going with the um, TDS caulk the teak deck solution I think that's what it is it didn't cause me any of these problems when I did my boat 36 feet all the way around I re my deck so structurally the swim steps are 100% um, I got a couple of caulk failures where it kind of melted when I sanded it so on a nice warm dry day I'll patch that up but it's uh they're done and I'm happy and they're strong It'd be a little big for a fishing boat but for a utility boat and a boat we'll be swimming off of in the river pretty happy with these little swim platforms I've got the braces installed just with two little screws on each end um, when we go to put it permanently I'll have four of a little bit larger screws and we'll set it in some sort of sealant I don't have larger screws right now but it doesn't matter because it's gonna have to come off come paint time but happy old man right now Next project, bring them on, come on, let's go, what's next?